What happens to planes after they've touched down for the last time? Circumstances may vary, but many commercial and military aircraft meet a shared fate in a desert purgatory known as a boneyard, where they'll basically do one of two things, sit for years, baking under the sun, slowly decomposing as their parts are used for replacements on active aircraft or wait for another carrier to pick them up and breathe some new life into them. At their core, boneyards are not graveyards so much as long-term storage facilities. Sitting wingtip to wingtip, planes can remain on permanent pause for months, years and even decades. The arid, dry heat of the desert provides the perfect climate to maintain old airframes since humidity would corrode and rust the metal and plastic materials found in many of these former flying machines. Airline operators, film crews and tourists often frequent these boneyards for parts, repurposing and refurbishment or freight. Consequently, many frames kept at these facilities have missing fragments whether they're vertical stabilizers, doors, flaps, engines or landing gear, since they'll be used on active aircraft needing those parts. Note that in-service airplanes also fly into these boneyard airports, which are utilized for their maintenance and refurbishment facilities, and for that reason, Nearly all of them remain off-limits to the general public. While some airframes have decades of operation behind them, others have fallen victim to defunct airlines and expired contracts some have even come directly from the manufacturer, still awaiting a buyer. These boneyards are an obgeek's paradise. Where else can you take a trip back in time on such an enormous scale and feast your eyes on dozens of United 727s and KLM MD-11s? Lockheed Tri-Stars and DC-10s, 747s and B-52s. The most committed visitors photograph the aircraft and registration numbers so they can go home and research each plane's life story. And the best part? Most of these sites are located in the deserts of California, Arizona, and New Mexico, as you can see in the Google map above. We've also included several outside the US that are worth stopping by if you happen to be anywhere near Bangkok or remote parts of Spain, the Australian outback or Kyrgyzstan. If you're planning to visit any of these in person, be sure to obey all warning signs and avoid any restricted areas during your boneyard adventures. Consider this your go-to guide for visiting aircraft boneyards around the world. Aircraft are kept at various levels of restoration, some are kept in as close to working order as possible if they are deemed to be needed to fly at a later date, while others are partially dismantled. Some of the aircraft stored at Davis Monthan include retired B-52 bombers, aircraft capable of carrying nuclear weapons. As part of strategic arms limitation treaties with the Soviet Union, the B-52s were stored with their wings removed and placed next to the plane, allowing Soviet satellites to verify that the bombers had been taken out of service. Others are used for spare parts, with the components sitting in the aircraft until they're needed. On site is a smelter, where some of the surplus aircraft are shredded and totally recycled. And with the original assembly lines of most of these aircraft long since mothballed, Davis Monthan is home to some 400,000 piece of tooling and machinery needed to create specific aircraft parts. Aircraft all over the world, not just those flown by the US, contain parts from the base's enormous stockpile. As long as there are aircraft flying, military and commercial aircraft boneyards will always be necessary to keep other planes in the air, says aviation author Nick Veronico, who has visited Davis Monthan as well as the Mojave facility and other boneyards in the desert states. Each of the storage yards typically performs a variety of functions from storing aircraft that are temporarily out of service but expected to return to the fleet, to reclaiming usable parts which are inspected, overhauled, and then held until needed by active aircraft, to dismantling of the aircraft carcasses. These functions go hand in hand and are part of the life cycle of an aircraft. Uh, we have increased our uh, air stored aircraft here today. Um, we probably have about 180 to 190 uh, airplanes. Uh, in storage here today. Uh, last summer we probably had about the 60.